Have you ever wondered why there is an overwhelming amount of liberal arts colleges? Have you ever wondered why Greek life exists? Greek fraternities and sororities have been a symbol of college life for centuries. Did you know over 80% of the executives of Fortune 500 companies are fraternity men? More than three-fourths of the United States senators are fraternity men. And 40 out of the 47 United States Supreme Court justices since 1910 are fraternity men. Is this a coincidence? If an employer sees Greek fraternity on your resume, does it give you a hidden advantage? How and why did Greek life become so prominent on college campuses? The answer to these questions directs us straight to the Black nobility House of Farnese. The House of Farnese established the Society of Jesus, otherwise known as the Jesuits, as a military order through the papal bull under Pope Paul III, whose name was Alessandro Farnese. The leader of the Jesuits is called the Superior General or the Black Pope. The first Black Pope was Ignatius of Loyola, in 1539. Before Loyola was the Black Pope, he was a member of the Alumbrados, the Spanish Illuminati, the precursor to Adam Weishaupt's Bavarian Illuminati, which was started in 1776. Loyola was obsessed with fame and had a reputation of being a narcissist. Under the House of Farnese, Loyola's mission was to infiltrate and reform the Protestant and Catholic churches. Loyola established the methods of prayer, otherwise known as the spiritual exercises, which are still used today in all Jesuit training. The spiritual exercises stem from mystical and hermetic practices, which enable demonic control. Hermetic magic is a type of black magic that originated from ancient Egyptians and was portrayed in the Book of the Dead. Rene Dianju, a descendant of the Merovingian bloodline, persuaded Cosimo Medici of the Black Nobility House of Medici family to establish a library at San Marco, where Plato, Pythagorean works, and books on hermetic magic were translated. It was from Cosimo Medici's library that sparked up the Greek and Egyptian teachings by the Jesuits that influenced the Italian Renaissance. The Jesuits have been responsible for major deception and murder throughout history, which is unknown to the public. In the book, The Suppressed Truth About the Assassination of Abraham Lincoln, the author claims that the powerful Giacomo Antonelli, a cardinal and secretary of the Papal States under Pope Pius IX, supervised the plot to kill Abraham Lincoln with the help of the Jesuits. Notice the hidden hand. And we all know about the JFK conspiracy involving the mafia and black nobility connections, but that would be an entire video in itself. Charles Chinnakey, a Catholic priest, wrote in his memoir that the Jesuits killed Lincoln. He believed there was a conspiracy between the Vatican and the Jesuits to take control of the United States by importing certain powerful Catholics from black nobility families. He eventually denounced the Catholic Church and left, saying it was anti-Christian and pagan at its core. In 1599, the Ratio Studorium was written by academics at the Jesuit Roman College, established by Loyola. This Jesuit plan of education is a document that standardized the Jesuit education and was the precursor to the liberal studies that have been instituted in all colleges and universities. 100 years after the Jesuits were established, they were running almost 700 schools. The Jesuit missionaries traveled all over the world establishing liberal arts education. The Jesuit China missions brought Western science and astronomy, and it was the Jesuits who popularized Confucius and had a huge influence on the Chinese Enlightenment. The Ratio Studorium was revised in 1832 but still centered around the liberal studies of science, social science, arts, and humanities. In 1820, Luigi Fortis was elected the Black Pope. During his short term in office, he spent it institutionalizing the Jesuit plan of education into colleges in Europe, Canada, and the United States, 
and this was the birth of Greek life. And since 1825, all but two U.S. presidents and U.S. vice presidents have been fraternity men. Union College, a private male-only school in New York, established Kappa Alpha, the first fraternity. Since 1795, 19 U.S. presidents have attended this school, and two years after the birth of Kappa Alpha, Sigma Phi and Delta Phi were established. This triad referred to themselves as fraternities, which derives from the Latin word frater, meaning brother. The Jesuit established fraternities started spreading to other campuses. National chapters were created, and that is how Greek life began in the United States. In 1851, the first two official women's secret societies were founded at Wesleyan College in Macon, Georgia. They were called the Adelphian Society and the Philomathian Society. It wasn't until 1900 these secret societies became the sororities Alpha Delta Pi and Phi Mu. Sorority comes from the Latin word soror, meaning sister. There are many collegiate elite secret societies in the United States, and they make a significant effort to keep the affairs and initiation secret. The first collegiate secret society was the Fat Hat Club, created in 1750 at the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. President Thomas Jefferson was a member. Thomas Jefferson also wrote favorably about Adam Weishaupt, the founder of the Bavarian Illuminati and Jesuit professor. Although Weishaupt was the frontman for the Luciferian organization, he was actually backed and funded by the Black nobility Farnese family. It was the House of Farnese who elevated the Rothschilds into power and moved the Farnese family seat of power to Washington, D.C. This family is one of the most powerful families on earth today. The Farnese family built their Pentagon fortress known as Via Caparola in Lazio, Italy, in their map room, which was designed in the 1500s, includes a painting of the world showing the continent Antarctica. Did you know that Antarctica was not officially discovered until the 1770s? This was around the same time the Farnese family recruited Adam Weishaupt to create the Illuminati and move the Farnese seat of power to Washington, D.C., where they built their second Pentagon. How did the Farnese family know about Antarctica? Interesting to note that the Washington capital is placed between Virginia and Maryland. Did you know that Larry Farnese is a state senator for Pennsylvania? In the book, Rulers of Evil, Tupper Saucy explains how Washington, D.C. was built on land that was owned by the Jesuit-educated Daniel Carroll of the very rich and powerful Carroll family. Daniel's brother, John Carroll, was a Jesuit priest and the founder of the Jesuit College, Georgetown University. John Carroll was the priest of Pierre Charles La Enfant, the man who was hired to design Washington, D.C. with occult symbology. Jesuit alumni dominate leadership positions in U.S. military and intelligence, as well as politics and law. The Farnese family ruled Parma and Castro of Italy, and today the princes of Bourbon Parma covertly have authority in the U.S. Pentagon and U.S. military through their Jesuit intelligence, and it is the Italian black nobility families who control Hollywood and the media. Did you know that Hitler was extremely anti-Jesuit and considered them to be the most dangerous enemy? Over 200 Jesuits were murdered by the Nazis in Europe. It is interesting to note that most people believe the Jesuits are one and the same with the Catholic Church, but they are not. They are actually at odds with each other. There is an ongoing tense relationship between them over disagreements about abortion, birth control, gay marriage, among other things. The Jesuits are in favor of far-left politics, particularly Marxism. And the conspiracy that the Jesuits have infiltrated the Catholic Church is more than obvious. And now the current Pope Francis is the first Jesuit Pope. Pope Francis served under the Black Pope before he became the head of the Vatican. 
I understand it might be difficult for some people to believe that the Jesuits could be a sinister group, but we must understand what the Jesuits believe and who put them in power. The spiritual exercises taught by Loyola were based on mystical alchemical practices. In all Jesuit collegiate secret societies, the words circuli crux non orbis prosunt are displayed for all to see and memorize. This is an alchemical expression which translates to the diameter of the sphere, the tau of the circle, and the cross of the orbit do not benefit the blind. This means that these Jesuit esoteric disciplines are not accessible to the uninitiated. I suggest you do a search for vitriol and Freemasonry for more incredible information. This Egyptian symbology is also found on the alchemical door aka the alchemy gate or the magic portal that still stands in Rome at the old residence of Massimiliano Palombara. This door dates back to the 1600s. Palombara was a Kabbalist and mystic who was sought out by the Catholic Cardinal Decio Azzolini, who was the leader of the Squadron Volante. This group of liberal cardinals were looking for enlightenment when they found Palombara. There are many legends of people going through the magic portal door, disappearing forever, but leaving behind flakes of gold. The Monita Secreta, otherwise known as the Secret Instructions of the Jesuit Society, is a Machiavellian instruction manual on the art of dissimulation and manipulation in the pursuit of money and power. Some say it was written by Claudio Aquaviva, while some scholars claim it was written by ex-Jesuit Jerome Zahorsky. The manual itself is chilling to read. One line that stuck out to me read, Those who do not love us shall fear us. Did the Jesuits write this, or was this written by a rogue Jesuit? Does it even matter who wrote it? The fact is, someone wrote it. And it makes me remember Loyola's obsession with fame and what he accomplished in his life and the power he had over the entire world, including his connections with the black nobility. Could Loyola have been the first sellout for fame and fortune? I'll leave you with that to do your own critical thinking. Until then, stay safe out there and don't stop questioning the world around you.